In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create tension and energy uh, to a build-up. Uh, try and make it uh, more exciting and create anticipation when you're making your tracks. Um, this is the main point in a track, uh, how it builds up, how it creates tension for the listeners. Um, and this is just the ways that I, I like to create tension in my tracks that I make. It might help you guys, so I'll play this through and then I'll talk you through some of the, the stuff. Right, so that was a a little uh, arrangement I made uh, just to show you a few th uh, things that I do when I'm creating tension in my tracks. Um, I've got them in three different layers. Uh, as you can see, they're noted here at the top. And I've got the, the drop here as well, over uh, 16 bars. First layer consists of 16 bars, second is 8, and the third is 8. Uh, I'll go into these just one at a time. Um, the first thing is, uh, well, what tension, like, what you could uh, use to create tension is uh, loads of different things. Uh, you could use risers, whether it be a white noise riser, which I've got here. Uh, I've got two inst instances of it here. Uh, you could use pitched risers, uh, which is... Uh, like these two ones I've got here with massive an ES2. Um, you could use snare rolls, uh, snare rolls or drum builds. Uh, I've got a snare roll here. Uh, as you can see, it's in green. Um, automated filtering, which is like taking out the low end or high end of a synth uh, to create movement and tension within a track, which I've got on a little um, synth here. Um, I'll get into that further in a second. You could uh, use melodic or harmonic tension, moving up or down octaves as you go through the drop, as you go higher, uh, as you progress. Uh, you could change uh, change in volume, and you can automate the volume, um, have it 5 or 10% higher on the drop. So say it's minus eight decibels uh, leading up to the drop and then five decibels or six minus six uh, is actually louder and will be perceived louder as well um, and also the removal and addition of instruments and how you place these instruments and how you make them transition and work together uh, you've got two different types of tension which is uh, micro tension which is your fills, uh, crashes, removal of your uh, kick, low end energy. Um, this keeps the momentum and adds interest and makes it sound organic and not robotic. Like all my uh, macro transition is in yellow here. Uh, that's all what I consider to be macro transition. 
uh, well, tension. And I've got it listed as transition, just to make it a bit easier. And then you've got your, um, no, sorry. Uh, the yellow is your micro transition, which is your fills, crashes, reverse crashes, white noise. And your macro tension is your big build ups um, to the drop, which is in green, which is a snare roll or synth risers or pitch, uh, increasing the pitch in certain um, synths and that. Um, yeah, so that's that. So the first layer, uh, layer you could have uh, subtle evolving layers that includes filtered percussion, uh, filtered kicks. What I've got, I've got, uh, as you can see, I've got two kicks here, 909 and a high kick. And the difference between these two is I've got them EQ'd uh, different. I've got the high, I don't know, but, um, oh, stop doing that. So annoying, man. Right. Uh, the high kick I've got, I've taken out of the low end because obviously I, I don't want to give the initial energy of the kick away straight away as soon as the uh, track starts just for a variation so when it does kick in on the drop it'll seem like it's heavier which it is because I've removed uh, the fundamental frequency of that kick so I've just named this high kick and I've just removed it some low end rolled it off and I've uh, kept it in where it drops I've, I've put that energy back in so it, it punches in harder um, you could have white noise sweeps to transition between 8 or 16 bars which I have got um, going from my first 8 bars into my uh, next 8 um, and let's see what I've done with this white noise riser I've got it um, high cut here, I've got high, uh, high cut turned on, which is this little symbol here. You can turn it on and off. If if you want to automate this, you need to turn it on. If you have it off and you're doing automation, um, it won't actually do anything. So you need to turn this on. And as you can see here, this blue line, that's automation for the, the high cut frequency. How you do this is you turn that on, uh, just left clicking it there. Go to channel EQ, high cut frequency, which will be the first one. Uh, what this does, uh, this, well, for the white noise sweep, makes it come in uh, a little more subtle and leaves space. You know, so it's not, you can't hear it, it's, it's less gradual but more intense. So I'll play that in the kick and you'll hear the difference, I mean. see on the EQ what's happening. So it gives it like a better swoosh effect. I'll play it without the um, high cut on. I've turned it off now, nothing will happen. It will just come in uh, gradual rather than uh, like sudden and sweep in like. With, it'll have less movement. Rather. See how nothing's moving on EQ because it's turned off. I mean, I, I mean it could work. Like it does work, but I just find that it's uh, it's just a bit more tighter and uh, has more of an effect if you do like a high noise, uh, high cut sweep. And all I do is just start off with something like like that, and then increase or decrease your, your ranges and stuff um, and then just do like a sweep how you curve the sweep you just go on to one of your uh, little tools here automation curve and you just curve this for however you, however you want it this is a good effect for transitioning between um, adding or taking away instruments um, and it's quite good uh, what I've also got to transition from 8 first 8 to the next 8 is a, a reverse crash as you can see um, and the reason why I've got this reverse crash here is for when the white noise riser does go up and the crash comes in uh, the rides come in 
if this reverse crash wasn't to be here, it would sound more robotic, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll let you listen. Like that little, little volume, you know, just like a subtle sweep straight into the ride. Uh, I think it's quite a good effect. It makes it sound uh, more professional. Uh, makes the transition pieces better. It still does have a good effect with the white noise. Um, but if you never had the white noise there, I just I think both of them work uh, quite well together uh, to give it a good a good flow. Uh, also, the white noise is to transition for the eight bar riser. That's that was my point in this. Uh, I've also got just a little rhythm to add interest to the first eight bars. Um, I've got a side-chained kick drum that I've sent to another bus. I've got a video on how to do side-chaining if you don't know how to do that. But what this basically does is every time that note is played, whereas every every downbeat and offbeat where the kick is played, uh, certain elements will be uh, pulled out by the compressor for allowing other things to come in its place, you know. So it makes a pumping effect, essentially. Uh, another transition I've got is uh, a delayed atmosphere effect uh, to begin the track. This uh, just adds your own kind of flavour to the first 16 bars and just makes it sound a, wee, a bit interesting. You can do this with any um, sample you've got. I've taken the sample from uh, Apple Loops. Uh, but what I've done, basically I've just put the sample in to play straight away. And I've got a delay in here. Uh, I've got it at 50% and 46 wet. And I've taken off some of the low stuff just to kind of add a little bit of sparkle to the delay. I've got uh, the the groove right uh, right in the centre here. Uh, this is good for when you've got like a four to the floor style house track. Uh, I'll let you listen to it with it. Take all these other things out. And as you can hear, well, I'll, I'll, I'll play it without it. Yeah, it sound, you could hear that straight away, it sounds really abrupt ending. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't sound uh, like it flows at all. And this groove, like, as, well, this um, tape delay groove plays in time with the kick as well. So every time the tape delay is repeating itself, it's uh, exactly on the beat and you'll hear it every every time the kick comes in, so it, it makes it sound a bit more interesting as well, having it on this groove. Yeah, so a little bit of tape delay just adds uh, quite a good effect and gives it more space. Um, if you turn your feedback up any more than 50%, or you're wet more than 50 It'll just continue to delay even though you've stopped the track and it'll make your speakers go all uh, weird and will end up making harsh noises. So keep it under 50% uh, or you can automate the volume levels down, bounce it down, then add the delay and then turn the volume down if you like. But this way works well for this. So we've got that. <coughs> the first eight bars are covered. Um, after the first date, the crash and the white noise riser transitions into the ride and the claps that are working. Um, and then on 9 to 16, I've got an 8 bar riser, which, uh, an 8 bar riser and uh, a little melody here just to kind of introduce the melody, which way it happen um, later on for the drop. Uh, the 8 bar riser acts like it's going to drop after 16 bars uh, and I'll show you what I mean so we'll play this all together and see and listen to how the transition uh, 
uh, between the first eight and the next eight and how they're all kind of in time. So what I've got going on there, obviously, it's, it's like it's anticipating it's a way to drop. You think it's a way to drop for the first time. This adds anticipation because it obviously hasn't dropped, and it's a way to go into even bigger riser, which is a 16-bar one instead of an 8-bar. So I think that's quite a good effect. It gets, catches people's attention. Uh, I've also, what I do every 8 or 16 bars, I like to take away a few bars at the end, like the kicks and a few instruments, just to kind of... Um, stop the repetitiveness of it and add in like just little fills and stuff i've not added a fill in here i've just left it blank but after the 16th bar i've took out half of that bar and added in a vocal as you can see it's yellow here uh, so uh, the kick stop and all the percussion stops and the little melody and as it's a way to jump in after the the riser you hear that vocal it's also got a tape delay on it as well like we spoke about the atmosphere I made as well um, another tape delay uh, that's in time with the kick which transitions this quite well I've also got a, another atmosphere effect as a door kind of closing sound I don't know if it sounds quite I don't know if it quite mixes in well with this you can't really hear it but I put it in anyway as, as I say you could do this with any um, any loop or uh, vocal or chopped up thing and it just adds interest it makes the transition seem a bit better um, and the difference between these eight bars and the next eight is I've removed a few instruments removed the kick open hats um, and the ride I've just brought the energy levels back down um, I've also Started the 17th bar with a, an initial um, heavy kick. So listen to that. That gives more of an impact, like something's changed dramatically. I'll play these 8 bars for you. Um, actually, I'll play these 16 bars for you and just let you listen to this. From here, though. <laughs> As you can hear, that kick has quite a good effect after it comes in after 16. Uh, I'll take this out and just let you listen to how less of an impact it will have on the transition. Uh, you can hear that was kind of robotic, but with the kick in, it like adds a punch to the to the first start of the 17th bar. And also, it's um, it smooths the piece of the 16 bar riser as soon as it comes in. Uh, I've also got a crash plane as well that I've I've only used twice. Uh, you want to use your your uh, transition transition elements like crashes, reverse crashes, white noises, stuff like sparingly, and have different ones different places because if you do like if I had a crash. Or reverse crash every eight bars, um, people would well the listener would lose interest, and uh, just uh, they'd expect after the next eight bars for a crash to come in. You know what I mean? So keep mixing your mixing your uh, elements up, your transition pieces up, and see what you could come up with with delays and stuff like that. Um, I've also I've uh, got claps playing here for the for these sixteen bars. 
and I've got these claps playing uh, where the kick would normally be playing uh, to create like a faster rhythm. Well, I've got it four to the floor up until this point where I speed it up a little, uh, the last uh, four bars. Um, you, you could even make it faster, but since I've got a snare roll going, going there, I think I've just left it like that. That has a good effect. That just grabs the listener's attention to something organic, which is a clap or a, a snare or whatever you want to put in. Uh, the shaker as well. That just adds a little bit of you know, a groove to it. So we've got... And what I've got on the uh, the snare, uh, the shaker, sorry, um, it's just a little bit of stereo delay this time, just to kind of ping pong the delays between the speakers and give it like a bigger stereo field effect. Um, see what it sounds like without it. Right, so it stops like you could hear it stops quite abruptly after uh, playing a few times, but I think. Um, Adding the stereo delay adds a great little effect once it does stop playing, like it's it's in a bigger space than what it is in. Uh, in, in like creating your tracks, it's all about what you don't hear rather than what you do hear. I could have kept the shaker playing all the way through, but I just thought this little rhythm at the start of every bar sounded quite good. It gives it a good character. So adding a stereo delay in this way is quite good. Uh, I've also got a little bit of overdrive. Um, I've compressed it as well. I think for the uh, just to pump it up a bit with the trig uh, with the side chain trigger on. I think. just giving it a little bit of movement you know so to allow the clap to come through it's taking the volume down of this little shuffle I've got for the clap to be heard like crisply um, right, okay so we've got that I've done exactly the same for the uh, the, the next uh, eight bars on this uh, layer two and layer three in the third layer I've added a ride uh, eight bars of a ride like I did on the on this here this section, second section of the first layer. I've also got the same transition piece um, into the ride, which is a reverse crash, which makes it transition smoothly. Um, see, without that, that wouldn't sound nearly as uh, like smooth. I know the first one I had a white noise there, but as I say, taking some away, putting them in different places and having them on their own. Sounds good, mixes it up a bit. Um, I put the rides in at this point just before it drops to add like high uh, frequencies just to give it a, a, a crisp uh, top layer. Uh, yeah, I've also got my synth here playing over the 16 bars, kind of uh, getting the listener in. First of all, I teased them. Well, just played like a little bit of the melody. The first, the first part of it, taken from the melody I did make, which is this here. Uh, it's like a you know, imagine like it's a call and response type thing. That's what they call it when you're writing melodies. Call and response. This would be the this section would be the call. That would be the response. And that's why I've only added the the first call into the build up. Because they're hearing this pattern over and over, you know, they're hearing the exact same thing and they're wanting to hear something different. That's why you put that in the drop, because then that's the call and that's the response. This little uh, other melody here. Uh, that's what the, the listener craves. Like, that. Um, I've also got it, uh, just added another octave of the same um, melody, and then that last eight bars here I just increased uh, the repetitive notes I've got going on here
yeah, so you can you can have it even quicker if you want, um, but it's just to kind of make it sound a bit more um, fast paced, linear, and then it drops into the melody, the full melody. Again, it simplifies here with a little rhythm, uh, doubles up for a wee bit of harmonic content at the end. I've also got a filter opening up. Well, I've got a high pass on this, uh, which gives it motion. You know, I don't know if you know how to do this, but this is a great effect when you're creating motion to your um, your drops. I had in a bit of overdrive with some stereo delay and doing what I said before with this um, high pass that's on. It's turned on here. Yeah. Is you just go into your channel EQ again here, high cut frequency, and then you automate it. Pressing A allows you to open and close your automation window. Then you just click nodes wherever you go. You'll see as you play through it live, your EQ will change. You know, so it opens up slowly, and only that frequency there is getting lit through. And then as it gets closer to the drop, this will open up, and eventually it will go up quicker with the slope. You're opening up the energy to the drop. You're drawing it in closer to the listener's ears. Yeah, so that like, you can imagine it's coming closer to you and it's like, obviously that's what you're wanting. That's what you're wanting the build to be like. So we've got them layers there. Um, what comes in on the first uh, of the 17th bar is this 16 bar riser. Uh, I've made two risers for you guys to follow along. Uh, people that have got massive could uh, copy that one, or if people that don't have standard, uh, well, that have only have standard programs within Logic, I've also made another one with the ES2. So we'll get to the massive one. 16 bar riser, I like to make it 16 bars for the final drop. You can make it 8 or 16, whatever you like, or even 32. Depends how long you want to drag the motion out. Um, but it just adds more tension, I think, having a longer drop. You don't want it too long, because obviously then people will lose interest. Unless you've got a lot of percussion and stuff on the go. So, right, enough, enough of that. Right, so how we get this on the go is you want to start a new new sound, I'll not start a new sound just because I like the what if uh, timbre I've got here uh, turn on all three of your oscillators turn all three on, the blue light should be on um, ok so we've got that on um, pick your wave tables, just usually keep them square or solid just now until you uh, get the, the ramping up thing sorted turn your amps up, this is basically your volume of each oscillator um, I've got two at the middle C, or whatever note you're playing. I've also got one an octave above. So you just turn them on. That'll and when when you press your key, that'll just give you um, a straight um, note sound. But what changes it to a riser is adding the LFO to the pitch uh, here, which these are the little pitch uh, tabs on each of your oscillators. And what I've got, you'll start off like this when you open it up and you'll be on uh, a sine wave what you want to do is assign left click well hold left click and drag to your um, each oscillator's pitch drag it down like minus uh, two octaves or three octaves or one whatever you whatever you find will be good but I, I think two is quite good for a riser starts low and comes up high uh, same with this, I've done a tw uh, one octave here, minus minus one, one octave, minus another one for that oscillator. Um, these combined three gives a certain timbre, which is quite good. Um, so you've got that, you've assigned your LFOs to your oscillators and done them minus. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second, why they're minus, not plus. Um, if you click the sync button, uh, yours will be at ratio 1 to... Eight usually, uh, but you want to change the bottom one to one and the top one to either eight, sixteen, or thirty-two, depending on how long you want your riser to be. Which, you know, as you've seen, mine's is a sixteen bar riser, so sixteen, and change this to a sawtooth wave. 
um, um, and as you can see, this starts up high and goes down low, the sawtooth. Um, so that's the reason why we need to put the minus in the pitch here, because we want it essentially to go from low to high. So if you put it positive, it would go high to low, so it would be like a downlifter, which you could you could do it after, after you've come out of a drop or something as well. So you just change these to a plus and you'll have a downlifter. So, um, <clears throat> but keep them minus for your risers. So that's that. Uh, you've got your dimension expander on. These settings are quite good. Um, you don't want it to have uh, like a, a large room, like a, a too large of a, a reverb on there on your riser, because as it drops, it'll sound like it's in a smaller space than that. Um, it would be less going from a higher energy to a lesser energy, if you know what I mean. So just keep it like kind of medium sized room or. Uh, Actually, it depends on what type of track you're making, but keep it like that. Uh, add a bit of reverb on again. This just makes it sound more full. I've got a little bit of high shelf and taken off some of the lows. So that's that. That's the setup for your for your VST. And what I've actually got here, uh, I've just drawn in a box and I've got one note playing. And my my track is in A minor, so you want your risers to be in the key of your track because that's your your kicks um, pitch uh, note and it's your your bass note as well so it just makes sense to have it in, in A um, you could try it with uh, the fifth as well which is an E in this case but just keep it A just now because um, E is your uh, E to A is your cadence if you know your music theory, so, uh, that okay. So you've got that. You've wrote in your note. You've done your uh, setup here. I've added a bit of overdrive, a bit of reverb as well to this on the inserts. And what I've also got on this, I've got a low cut frequency, kind of like what we've uh, had on our synth here. That was a high cut frequency. So what this does is basically the opposite. As it starts, it starts sweeping up from a lower frequency. It starts sweeping up from a lower frequency. Um, and as you get to the drop, you will only want uh, the last bar to contain like a high frequency, because your your low frequency is where uh, is what the listeners craving for. You know, like bass and kick drums. You want it heavy when it kicks in, so you want it to be thin when you when you reach the top. That's why you increase the pitch, um, because increasing pitch obviously increases the frequency um, and takes away the low energy. So that's essentially what we're doing uh, as this plays through. We're sweeping the low energy out. We're cutting it, cutting the low energy out as it progresses to the drop. If you know what I mean. And this is a great effect because it makes your drop sound bigger and fuller when you get into it. Right, so we've got that, and it should sound something like this. There's another reason why I've done a low cut on this as well is because the snare roll comes in uh, after the eighth bar, and obviously a snare is quite a a low frequency, a low pitched instrument drum to start off with, unless you want it. So, if two if two of these elements, the sixteen bar riser and the snare roll, had um, low frequency, they'd kind of muddy each other up. So that's another reason why I've cut um, low energy out this 16 bar riser because this snare comes in at 200 um, hertz and it'll just make it, it'll clear up the, the this uh, frequency spectrum for the snares to sound crisp, you know. Right, so that's that. Hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, We'll, we'll listen to the snare roll, and I'll tell you how to do that. 
and then we'll go to the other riser. So we've got a snare roll here. Right, okay. So as you can hear, the pitch changes uh, with this snare. It goes up and it goes up two octaves. So first things first, uh, you could draw in your, your snare roll here. Uh, you could copy this one. Uh, if you're thinking in terms of uh, four beats in a bar, you know, and then you've got little segments of that beat, four beats in that, uh, it's one, four, two, one, four, two. And then you just repeat this. Uh, over and over. That's what I've done for this anyway. Uh, just repeat that section over and over, and then you'll have your snare roll. So you've got that, you've got your snare roll MIDI in. Uh, you've got to open up your EXS24 next. Um, pick a snare, a uh, snare drum that you like from single drums, or you could load in a sample. I've just chosen 17 here. The next thing you want to do is make sure your uh, pitch here is set to as high as it could go, which is 12, which is one octave. You need to have this on for to do what the next stage is, to actually make the pitch rise. So you've got that linked to 12. Now you've got that pitch bend set to 12. And what we do next is we double click our, uh, to open up the piano roll here. Um, and you click this MIDI draw button here and this will open up a little tab underneath your MIDI <coughs> your MIDI sequence and you'll have an option here on your left, it won't start with pitch bend probably but you choose pitch bend from the drop down menu uh, and you'll see it'll be straight across like this at first when you get it and it won't be green so you just click it and it'll uh, turn green and what you want to do is you want to drag it up to as far as it could go up until where you've you where your way to drop it, you know. What this does is this increases from here, well, over this uh, eight bar sequence, one octave up. So the pitch of this snare goes up one octave as you get up here. And if you if you didn't like, you didn't have that set to twelve, it wouldn't change at all. So we'll just hear it again and watch. Right, so you can see that obviously works. Uh, if you have this at set at zero, it won't change at all. See how there's no pitch change now, but if you have it at 12, uh, I have one octave above, it will. So make sure you've got that set up, pick your drum, um, open up uh, this MIDI draw here in your piano roll, select pitch bend, and then there you go. That's how you do a, a snare roll. Snare rolls are great, you know, like sound great for uh, drops, last eight bars. Or you can even have it 16 bars, depending on what you want. Uh, another thing uh, with your snare rolls is to add a sample delay to it. And what this does, this uh, adds, well, this delays the sample, well, the MIDI sample we've got here, uh, like milliseconds between each speaker. So you can imagine it plays firstly on the left and then 300 milliseconds later it plays on the right, which gives it a bigger stereo field, so it makes it sound like it's bigger, you know? So you've got it playing on uh, both sides. Uh, like adds width to the to the sound. And that's what you want. You want a big sound just before the drop. And you can imagine the snares are on both sides and as the drop hits, the bass and the kick are in the middle, so that's where the like central energy is. The panning these out to the side sounds good. It allows space for things in the middle, like the ride to uh, go through, even though it's high uh, top energy, but uh, the riser as well, to swoop through the middle. Uh, I've added a sample delay to this, but I've not actually got it on. Uh, you could choose to have your uh, riser to the sides as well, which gives it a big, big sound and uh, ramp up, you know. Uh, it's good to add stereo delays before the drop to make things sound wider, and then, as soon as it drops, the bass and the kick are 
are like central energy, you know. Uh, so that's good. <coughs> so that's that. That's our snare roll. Uh, we've got. We've done a massive riser, and we'll do our ES2 riser here. Uh, exactly the same again. What we've done with um, adding uh, our note for our riser, whether it be eight or sixteen bars. So you just add it in. I've got it on A here. Um, obviously our track's in A, so that's why I've chosen this note. Uh, I've got it uh, low cutting again for the reason I want to remove the low energy as the snare roll comes in and as it gets to the end of the 32 bar um, dr uh, build up, it's thin, you know, like it's really thin and then it, that low energy just floods out when the drop happens. That's why I've got a low cut, automating that low cut up. Um, and how you actually create your your riser in uh, the ES2, which is the standard uh, program within Logic, you just choose uh, a preset, or you can make your own um, riser, uh, your own sound. Sorry, <clears throat> your own timbre of riser. I've just chosen Vintage Mix, which sounds uh, quite good. What you want to do here, it's detuned a little as well, but that's irrelevant. What you want to do, as in our EXS24, remember the pitch had to be set to 12. Uh, the same applies for this little box here. On the bottom left it says bend. You, I've got this at 24. And if you know your octaves, one octave is 12, two octaves is 24, three octaves is 36, so on. Um, so this goes from lower octave to two octaves above. So make sure that's set to 24. This one doesn't have a drop down menu. This just drags up and down as you hold it. So whether you choose 32, uh, 36 or 24, it's up to you, or 12. Right, so we've got that. We've set that up. Um, if, you, if you play your note without... Just right now what we've done, you'll just have a constant note. But what we need to do again is go into the MIDI draw again. Pardon me and pick pitch bend and pitch bend your note um, all the way up. I've done it differently in this this case um, because it starts starts lower this uh, riser starts lower and I've kind of done a sweep instead of a straight up curve uh, I don't know why but we'll, we'll hear see what it sounds like That sounds a bit weird with the curve actually, I'll, I'll see what it sounds like with just a straight up and down one, you know, I, I don't know if that works. Okay, that sounds so much better. That's more consistent. Yeah, okay, so don't put a curve on your riser. I don't think that sounds good. So keep it straight like that. It's quite good, actually. It sounds really good. Um, yeah, so that's that's your ES2 riser. All you do is do the same. Um, draw your MIDI note in, whatever bar you want, 16 bars, 8 bars. Uh, you don't need to do LFOs or anything with this one. All you need to do is change the pitch bend um, and choose a constant... Um, synth with a long release so it's obviously just it's playing the one note constantly you know it's not a pluck or anything um, yeah so change your pitch bend go into your MIDI draw pick pitch bend and then and then draw it in from bottom to top so hopefully that guy, uh, helps you guys with the with the risers um, what I also do to my risers is like have this trigger track sucking away some of the riser as it's going up, which gives it uh, like a, a movement, even more of a movement, and uh, like a rhythm as you know the kick's coming in. You know? I've not actually got it set up on this just now, but we'll, we'll do it just now. So, if you watch my video on how to do the uh, side chaining, I kind of explain it how I do it on there. But what I've basically got is I've got like a, 
a trigger truck set up to a bus, which is bus one, which sends a signal to this compressor, which takes away the volume of this riser as it goes up. So when the signal plays, the compressor comes into play and sucks away the volume, so it creates like a, a, like a, a pulsing effect. Uh, yeah, and it dropped off there because I've only got them bars here. Yeah, okay, I'll keep that in. That sounds quite good, as you could hear. So see what I mean? That actually sounds quite cool with the with the like uh, pulsing effect that's happening, the side chaining. That's quite cool. So hopefully that's up to you guys with your snare roll, your uh, riser, your massive riser, or your uh, ES21. Uh, what I've got again, I've showed you the reverse crashes, uh, high passing your white noise. Um, riser again. That's for transit. Well, you could have this for your. Uh, more of a chilled track, you know, ambient track, just a white noise riser, you don't need such a crazy riser for them kind of tracks, but I like to use these as a transition, you know, loads of producers use these. Um, uh, I'll actually show you how to create a white noise riser as well. All you want to do is open up a, an instance of the ES2, close uh, first two octaves, uh, the octaves? Uh, oscillators, close these two, and uh, click this dial, hold this dial, left click, round to noise, the resonance up, drive up a little, and got that happening, and it's basically, it's just the one like, white noise happening, if I was to turn the high pass off, it would just be uh, white noise the whole way through, you know, so, it, the, the, like, oscillation of it is not happening, it's only happening through the EQ. Well, at least I thought that was what was happening. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, it's actually happening in ES2. What I've done, as you can see here, as it was going through, uh, this cut uh, was uh, coming up. So I've automated the cut actually inside the ES2. So you've done that, you've made the white noise. Um, but if that, what you do here, you go to the ES2, mix plus filter and go to your MMF cutoff. And then that's what you do to make your white noise riser. That's what, that's where the sweeping effect comes in. That's what gives it its sweeping effect, which is cool. So that, as you can see, as this plays, uh, this little dial goes up here. It's sure, that's your automation controlling that there. Yeah, so that's how you make that. Um, so that's all them done. And finally, which a little bit of um, micro tension, a little bit of a different kind of fill I've got here, which, which like adds great character to the track makes it just uh, a bar of silence and some fills going on which is great i just come across this using drummer actually um i'll show you like how i came up with now uh, you go to the electronic drummer jester image uh the drop kit have this uh, dot here take off all your instruments and put the fills up to about here um and it'll give you a little fill which sounds great, you know, like I'm going to save this and bounce it down and use it maybe in future tracks for like another fill after a drop or before a drop or whatever. You know. It's 
great. You know, just add, well, this, some of these were already added on. What I've done is just add a bit of reverb, more distortion, and just to bring the levels up. Um, and that was that. That's the little bit of character that's added before the drop. Um, and I'll play it again for you, but I think I've went over everything. If there's any questions you guys have not explained fully or if you want to know anything else, just uh, give me a, a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if, you, if you like this video and if it's anyway helped you, producers, um, have a little bit more knowledge, then give me a shout. Good, that's good. If there's anything you want to tell me, then leave a comment again. And here goes. Uh, play this once again for you. Cheers. Cheers guys, uh, like and subscribe if you like my uh, tutorials, see you later.